What's up, A Push Peeps? We have Key Concept 1.2 for you today. This one is the most up to date video with the 2015 revisions to the new A Push curriculum. This is the most up to date video you will find at Key Concept 1.2. Before we begin, it is shout out time. A huge shout out to Ms. Pinato's class. I appreciate your support. I got a very nice email from you guys. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you this year. You are brilliant. If you want to shout out to your teacher, leave a request in the comment section below. All right, so let's take a look at this new curriculum of Key Concept 1.2, which focuses on the Colombian Exchange. It states, contact among Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans resulted in the Colombian Exchange and significant social, cultural, and political changes on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Check that out on page 26 of the framework. If you don't have it, you must download it, follow it. I have a link to it in my in the description below. Now, big idea, the Colombian exchange revolutionized life in the Americas, Europe, and Africa. Other big ideas to think of and questions are what were positives and negatives of the Colombian exchange on both hemispheres, and what were reasons that led to European exploration. All right, let's take a look at key concept of 1.2, Roman numeral one. It states, European expansion into the Western hemisphere generated intense social, religious, political, and economic competition and changes within European societies. And again, that's right from page 26. So let's explore some reasons for European exploration. Get it? Explore? <laughs> okay, let's just move on. Countries sought new sources of wealth, whether it was gold and or silver, but especially gold. There also was economic and military competition, this idea of glory, and each nation wanted to be the best. We'll see that the English get involved in period two as a result of the defeat of the Spanish Armada in the late 16th century. We see the spread of Christianity as a major motive, particularly when it comes to Spain, and the Spanish often tried to convert natives to Christianity. They did so through the Spanish mission system, which were outposts throughout the Americas to help convert natives, and they off. They often were military bases as well. Think of the three G's when it comes to European exploration. This could be a great short answer question, briefly explain a reason for European exploration of the new world. Think of the three G's, gold, glory, gospel. So you got gold or money, glory or fame, and then gospel, religion, or God. All right, so what are the impacts of the Columbian Exchange? Well, again, first of all, what is the Columbian Exchange? It is the exchange of plants, animals, culture, humans, diseases, etc. between the Americas, Europe, and Africa. So what are some examples of goods? Well, from the Americas to Europe and Africa, we have potatoes. And we also have maize, which we talked about in the Key Concept 1.1 video. Do you remember where maize was mostly cultivated? Yeah, that's right. You're a genius in the southwest portion of the present United States. We also have tomatoes. And just look at that delicious baked potato. Mm -hmm. Are you a butter or sour cream person? I think I'm sour cream, but I'm not sure. All right. From Europe to the Americas, we have things like wheat and rice and horses and chickens and oxen. Lots of livestock and perhaps none more important for Native Americans than the horse. Going back to Key Concept 1.1, where in North America did the horse impact Native Americans? Yep, you're right. It was the Great Plains and the Great Bison. Look at you, you little genius. So what are some impacts of the exchange? Well, in Europe and Asia, we see a massive population growth due to new food. We see an increase in wealth and a decrease in feudalism and the beginnings of the rise of capitalism. In Africa, we see the Spanish and the Portuguese. They used Africans from West Africa to be used as slaves in the Americas. And in the Americas, we see the spread of diseases, particularly smallpox and measles that killed many Native Americans. We see the emergence of social classes, a group like the Mestizos, which are people of mixed Native American and European ancestry. And also the horse transformed Native life by making hunting easier on the Great Plains and the Great Basin. And we also have the Encomienda system emerges as well, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Plus, I got a video for it in the description. I got you covered. All right, so let's talk about technology and trade. There are some reasons why the Europeans were able to explore, and that's because of new technology. We have the sextant. This is a piece of technology that could be used to find the exact position on Earth, which led to more precise sailing. Basically, this bad boy is like the first GPS for ships. 
We have the Caravel, which was a ship introduced by the Portuguese that allowed for faster travel. We have the Compass and the Quadrant, which also improved sailing efficiency. When it comes to economic improvements, think of things like the Joint Stock Company, which is basically a front runner for the modern day corporation, which people pool their money together and they share the profits and losses of a colony. And we'll see this used in Jamestown, which was founded by the British in 1607. More on that in the next video. All right, key concept 1.2, Roman numeral two, the Colombian exchange and development of the Spanish empire in the Western hemisphere resulted in an extensive demographic, economic, and social changes. So what is the impact of Spanish exploration? Well, again, we talked about deadly diseases, things like smallpox and malaria. Here is a drawing from the Aztec empire of people encountering these diseases. And in some areas, it killed as many as 90% of Native Americans because they were not immune to these European diseases. Again, we have the introduction of new animals and crops that we mentioned, especially the horse. I can't stress that enough, how important that is for Native Americans. And also crops. Food is brought over, such as wheat, rice, and sugar, which will play a prominent role in agriculture and cash crops later. All right, the encomienda system have more detailed video that you can check out in the description. This was when Native American labor was marshaled. Please make sure you know this term, marshaled. It is in the curriculum. You could see it in a multiple choice question, and if you don't know what it is, it'll be difficult to answer. This means to arrange or assembled, and they Native Americans were marshaled on plantations or forced to work on plantations. The goal was to use the labor for agriculture and gain precious metals like gold and silver from mines. Eventually, the encomienda system is going to be replaced by African slave labor, mostly because a lot of Native Americans die, but they also run away because they know the land. The new laws of 1542, for example, these were Spanish laws that outlawed the encomienda system. Now, the Spanish and Portuguese traders, they acquired slaves from West African groups, and these slaves were used by the Spanish on plantations and mines, so they kind of replaced the encomienda system. The Spanish caste system emerges, and this incorporated Europeans, Africans, and natives. And we see at the top that the Europeans, if you took a world history class or a global class, you remember the Peninsulares, those that were born in Spain. The Creoles are 100% Spanish that were born in the colonies. Then we see groups like Mestizos and Mulattoes. And Mestizos were a mixed European and Native American, and Mulattoes were of mixed European and African ancestry. And here is a painting of a Mestizo child. All right, key counts have 1.2 Roman numeral 3. In their interactions, Europeans and Native Americans asserted divergent worldviews regarding issues such as religion, gender roles, family, land use, and power. So there's this misunderstanding between each group of each other. When it comes to gender roles, many Native American societies, as we talked about in key concept 1.1, were matrilineal, whereas in Europe, they were based on the male side or the father side of the family. Land, there are different concepts of land. Europeans believed in individual land ownership, where natives did not. They believed in, in terms of a community. It belonged to everybody. Religion, Native, Native Americans tended to believe in animism, or this belief is spirits in nature, and they also tend to be polytheistic. And shamans or medicine men held tremendous power. All of those ran contradictory to Christianity, which was practiced by Europeans. There were some useful, useful aspects of each other's cultures that were eventually adapted. N natives adapted various technology, things like horses, things like guns and horses as well, although that's not technology. And Europeans adapted agricultural techniques from Native Americans. Native resistance to European encroachment and labor occurred, and encroachment means kind of like coming onto somebody's land or somebody's space. And natives sought to preserve political, economic, and religious autonomy. Everybody do me a favor and make sure you know this word autonomy. If you're f using the fill in the blank guide for this video, circle it right now. My students, circle it. This means independence or self-rule. In America today, people become autonomous when they're 18 years old, when they're legally adults. And they tried to do so diplomatically and or militarily. And there were debates over how non-Europeans should be treated. How should... Africans and natives be treated by Europeans. Well, many Europeans saw natives and Africans as savages, as less than human. Juan de Sepulveda, he was this guy that advocated harsh treatment of the natives, and he claimed that slavery for natives was justified under Christianity. 
On the opposite end, you have this dude, Bartolome de las Casas, and he argued that the natives deserve the same treatment as all other men. And he played an instrumental role in the ending of the encomienda system and contributed to this idea of the black legend that the Spanish really contributed to a lot of destruction of Native American society. And what were arguments used to subjugate Africans and natives? Well, we have racism, we have, we have religious reasons, and also this idea that natives and Africans were seen as barbaric or savages. All right, we'll finish up with some test tips for multiple choice and short answer. Be familiar with the impacts of the Colombian exchange, not just food. Think about disease too. You have increase in world trade, permanently connecting two hemispheres. Be able to identify specific goods and their impacts. What comes to mind right away for me is the horse. The impact the horse had on Native Americans, the impact the potato had on Europe, and also the encomienda system as well. Impact on Africans, we see drastic growth in slavery, which we'll talk about more in Key Concept 2.1. And for essay questions, European interactions with Native Americans, and we'll talk more about that in period two. Again, you will not see an essay exclusively from period one. It would be a combination of period one and two. This could also be a part of a larger topic comparing Spanish colonization with other European countries, which we will talk about the English and the French in the next video. I thank you guys very much for watching. We'll figure out who this dude is, Bacon, and what his beef is. Why are he and his people marching with weapons and burning down Jamestown? We'll talk about that in the next video. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. I wish you nothing but the best of luck on all your tests, especially the one in May. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the, section, in the comment section below. And I will see you for the next video. Have a good day.